Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd, as Dan Holliday. Box 13, Care of Star Times. If you're interested in preventing a murder, come to 327 North Greeley Street in Edgemont. It should take you only three hours by train to get here. But you must come at exactly 3.30, or it may be too late. Hmm. The whole letter was typed. Even the signature at the bottom, Pat Kennedy. I didn't know if Pat Kennedy was a man or a woman. But as it turned out, it didn't matter. Even though I got there before 3.30. <laughs> And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Double Trouble. How long will you be gone this time, Mr. Holliday? Well, that's a little hard to tell, Susie. I think it depends on Pat Kennedy, whoever he or she is. I don't like letters that have only type signatures at the bottom. Why not? Well, it, it always makes me think that someone else wrote it. And that's exactly what makes me think this may be very interesting. You mean... You agree with me? Absolutely. But you're still going to Edgemont. That's right, Susie. (laughs) I'll never learn, will I? Someday you'll get into trouble. What makes you think I haven't already? Well, don't put the light in the window for me, Susie. I'll try to find my way around in the dark. So long. Well, whoever wrote that letter was right. The train left me on Edgemont Station platform exactly three hours after I left Susie. And a taxi left me in front of 327 Greeley Street at 3.20, ten minutes before deadline. It was an apartment house. I walked into the lobby. A not-too-interested clerk looked up as I walked over to him. Yeah? Is there a Pat Kennedy living here? Uh Uh-huh. Miss Pat Kennedy. Why? I'd like to see her. Apartment 1B, straight down the hall. Um, aren't you going to ring her up first? No, phone in her place. But be sure you knock first. Oh, sure, sure. That's one of my good habits. 1B, you said, huh? Yeah, uh, one, one B, I said. Thank you. Sure, anytime. I got to apartment 1B. I knocked. Then I tried the door. It was open, and I walked in. Miss Kennedy? Pat Kennedy? I walked into the apartment a little farther. The clock on the table ticked away. Its hands at 323. There was a window open in the room, and I walked to it. The window faced a court. I turned away from it, walked into the bedroom, and I stopped. Miss Kennedy. Miss Kennedy. Don't move, bud. Huh? Get away from her. You better send for a doctor. Just stay right where you are. Doctor. It's a little late for that. She's dead. Yeah, I thought so. Oh. Oh, you did, huh? And who are you? I think I'll ask the questions. Stand right there. Now, look, this girl's been killed. I'm going for the... His fist hit me right on the button, and when I got my interest back, he was still there, looking down at me. With him was another man. The newcomer blinked once or twice, and then... The next time you try to make a break for it, fellow... Make sure you don't try an end run past an ex pug. Hmm. What makes you think he's ex? Come on, get up. What's this all about? Got any idea who we are? No. My name is Johnston. Lieutenant Johnston, homicide. Who called the police? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Cassidy? Yeah, Lieutenant. Bring that clerk in here. Yes, sir, right away. So you're the police? Uh huh. And you're Dan Holliday, visiting Edgemont. How do you know who I am? Yeah, your wallet, identification. Oh, thanks. Okay, start talking. Who did this? Are you kidding? Hardly. Take a look at her and then ask that again. I'm sorry, but I don't know anything about it. You no? Know? Cassidy walked in on you while you were bending over. So what? That doesn't mean anything. Well, maybe not, but Here's I'll... the clerk, Lieutenant. Okay. Ever see this man before? You, I'm talking to you. Me? That's right. Sure, I seen him. He came in maybe ten minutes ago and asked for Miss Kennedy. Is that right, Holiday? Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Cassidy? Uh, yes, sir. What time did you walk in on this? Oh, maybe uh, 325. That's right, too. You, uh, clerk, what's your name? 
Marvin. Marvin Redmond. Anyone else come to see Miss Kennedy today? Uh, no, sir, nobody. Just this man. You sure? Yes. Could anybody get by you at the desk? Oh, no, I see everybody who comes in. Uh-huh. Well, Holiday? What do you mean, well? You were the only one here. Now, wait a minute. I don't know any more about this than you do. I came in here and found her like that. Why? Why what? Why did you come to see her? She asked me to. Old friends? I didn't even know her. <laughs> you want to say that again? Uh, what I meant was I didn't know who she was. Yeah. Wait a minute. There's a letter in my wallet. Letter? Yeah, I... It wasn't here. What kind of a letter are you talking about? It's a letter from Miss Kennedy asking me to help her. She was afraid of being killed. She had a reason. So you got a letter from her? That's right. Someone took the letter. Where did you find my wallet? Yeah, on the floor. Why? The person who killed her also took that letter out of my wallet. <laughs> Look, you tried to get past Cassidy. He thought you were making a break for it and slugged you. And then he called headquarters. You weren't alone for even ten seconds. Meaning no one could have taken that letter? Right. Oh, no, that, that's wrong. I mean, I... I... Yeah? What were you going to say, Redmond? Well, that... there's no phone in here. Mr. Cassidy had to come to the desk to make a call. Cassidy, did you? Well, well, sure, but this guy was out cold. He couldn't get away, so I thought it... So you thought it was all right to take a walk down the hall? You idiot. You should have called for the clerk and got him to make the call. But, Lieutenant, yeah, I thought... but... Well, Lieutenant Johnson... Shut up. You're going to headquarters. On what charge? Just one, but it's a good one. Suspicion of murder. So that's your story, huh, Holiday? You're a good Samaritan. You help people. That's it? Call Lieutenant Kling. I gave you the number. Yeah, I'll give you some news. This happens to be Edgemont, different city. I'm the lieutenant here. Kling can identify me, verify my story. I'll do all the police work necessary on this case. Sure, sure you will. Cassidy, one of your men, pulls a prize boner. He walks out of a room where there's a murdered girl. He leaves me there alone. So what? That's exactly what you're thinking. So what? Cover for him. Use me as a goat. You've got a sucker. Is that it? Play him for all he's worth. Yeah, I'll play you for all you're worth. You were the only one to see that Kennedy girl today. So that makes me a killer. That makes you the best suspect I've ever seen. What's my motive for killing? I'll her? find one. Oh, you will? I will. So you really believed I killed her? I do. Mm -hmm. You want to charge me with murder? Or just book me on suspicion? I... You're a pretty smart boy, aren't you? Just smart enough to know that you don't have enough evidence to charge me. And while we're on the subject of intelligence, how come your man Cassidy was Johnny on the spot? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? It might help. And we were tipped. Someone called headquarters, said there'd be a murder at that address, and I sent Cassidy. Uh-huh. So the letter I got from her is gone. Somebody tips the police, and you still refuse to believe it might have been a frame. With me doing the laughing cavalier inside it. I'll tell you everything when I've got everything. Meanwhile, you'll cover for Cassidy so your detective division doesn't get a laugh. Shut up. Yes? Lieutenant? Who'd you expect, Sherlock? Lieutenant, uh, is it all right to talk? Can you? Is, uh, is Holiday going to be charged? Uh, what do you got, Cassidy? Why do you ask that? Because there's an attorney here with a writ of habeas corpus. What? What did you say? Well, there's a lawyer here. Shut up! Well, got friends in town, Holiday? If so, they're very welcome. And you said you were a stranger in Edgemont. I still say it. Uh-huh. Yet a perfect stranger comes along and springs you on a writ. Is that so? And he knows there'll have to be a bail post. Brother, that's hospitality. Well, Lieutenant, is there a formal charge or do I walk out of that door? Well, get out. Well, thank you. But I'm not finished with you. Don't try to leave town or you'll be picked up for jumping bail. Don't worry. I'm just as much interested in this as you are. Holiday, mark my words, I believe you're guilty. And so help me, as sure as I'm a foot high, I'll get evidence to prove it. Even if you have to frame me to clear that great brain, meaning Cassidy. Yeah, I'll get you. And when I do, it'll be for keeps. Well, Lieutenant Johnson was burned. He knew his department was in for a roasting if Cassidy's mistake got out. Meanwhile, I looked very funny as a goat. <laughs> and I didn't even know who had had me released. The lawyer brought the writ and put my bail up, wouldn't say a word. He left me, and it was dark when I walked out on the street. I couldn't leave Edgemont, and I didn't want to. Not yet. I got into a cab knowing I'd be followed by one of Johnson's men. and went to a hotel and registered. 
I was just sitting down to think when... Yes, who is it? Is that Mr. Holliday? Yes, who are you? Please, I must see you. Please let me in. Oh, no, thanks. Not until I know who and what you are. Look, I will slide something under the door. You look at it, then you decide that you should let me in or not. All right? Go ahead. Did it come through? Yeah. You are satisfied, Mr. Holliday? This this is a receipt for my bail bond. Yes. I'm the one who got you out. Please, I can come in now. You're Philip Duval. Yes, yes. Now, please to let me in before it is too late. Okay, come on in quickly. Mr. Holliday, you know that you are followed here. Sure, Johnson's watching every move I make. Yes. Why'd you bail me out? What do you know about Pat Kennedy? I knew her ten years ago, maybe. We were dancing partners. Wait a minute. Were you followed up here? Oh, no, no. I am sure that I was not. How do you know? Because the police do not know me. How do you know I was here? I was watching Pat's room. Yes, go on. Then I waited outside the police station. I see you come out. I see the detective follow you. I make sure I am not followed. Then I come here. Uh Uh-huh. And then what? I come to this hotel and take a room. I looked at the register. I see your name. Then I wait and then come here. Mr. Duvall, you seem to know quite a bit about how to evade tacklers and slip away from enemies. Because I want to know who killed her. How was she to you? We we are in love once. Then she leaves me. I do not see her for a long time. I find out she is here, and I come. And kill her. No, 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 please. Please, would I do all this for you if I kill her? Why, why? Maybe I'll find an answer. What do you want with me now? I want... I want to give you this. This is a letter addressed to Box 13. Yes, yes. You will please to read it. Box 13. By accident, I saw your ad in the Star Times. I must have your help because I cannot go to the police. Please come to me as soon as you can. You see, she is afraid. The one time I see her, she tells me she is afraid. Of what? Of whom? I do not know. How did you get hold of this letter? She gave it to me to mail. I, I laugh at her. I think she is being foolish. But now... So you didn't mail it? No, no. Yet, I did receive a letter with a type signature. A letter that anyone could have written. Yes, yes. Okay, Mr. Duvall. Sit down and do a lot of talking. Oh, no, not here. You will please come to my address later tonight. Why? Because, because although I am not sure, I think I know who killed her. And unless you want to be arrested for her murder, I think you better come to see me. And now back to Double Trouble, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, I had to take Duvall at his word. What that word was, I didn't know. Maybe he did kill Pat Kennedy. Maybe he didn't. Anyway, I had to see him. I slipped out of the hotel knowing that one of Johnson's men was trailing me. I had to find some way to get rid of him. There was a war surplus store open down the street. I went in. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I think so. Got any coveralls? Oh, sure. Stacks of them. What size? 44. <laughs> any place I can try them on? Yes, the small room in the back. I'll get you a pair of the coveralls. Uh, it's all right. I'll look for them myself. I'd like to pick them out. All right. They're all on the racks there. How much are they? Three ninety-five. <laughs> okay, here you are. Thank you. Even change. Just take your pick. Yeah, thanks. I slipped behind one of the racks. The plainclothesman trailing me was waiting outside. I picked one of the coveralls from the rack and slipped into the back room. Pulled the coveralls over my clothes and climbed out of the room through a window. (laughs) It wasn't a great disguise, but it was better than having the police look for a man wearing a light gray suit. Twenty minutes later, I rang the bell at Duvall's place. Yes? Is Mr. Duvall here? Philip? Yes, Philip Duvall. No, he's not here. Uh, Will you come in, please? Oh, thank you. (laughs) I'm worried for him. He said he would be home an hour ago, but uh, he's not come. No phone call to you? No. Uh, Who are you, please? A friend of his. My name is Holiday. Holiday? Then then you are the man he went to see. Tonight? Oui. 
You mean he called and said he was going to see me? No, he went early. Uh -huh. And he hasn't come back yet? No. Oh, I'm so worried. Do, do you know Pat Kennedy? Yes, I know her. I read that she's dead, and I'm glad. Glad? Why? Philip loved her. She did not love him. She left him. Yes, I know all that. Philip did not know Miss Kennedy was here until he happened to see her. Did he mention that she was afraid of something? Yes, he told me. But I ask him, I beg him not to see her because she's not good. She's not good at all. Do you know of what she was afraid? No. Only that Philip told me that she could not go to the police, that the police would not be able to help. I wonder why not. I do not know. I know nothing except that I want my son to forget her, because if he does not, she will bring bad things, she will. That's your phone. It's probably your son. Yeah, yes, it is, Philip. <laughs> would you tell him I'm here, please, in a hurry? Yes? Uh, yes, this is Mrs. Duval. No, no, I'm his mother. Huh? No. What? No. What's the matter? No. No. no Give me the receiver. Oh, no. Hello. Mrs. Duval can't talk. I. No. What? Oh, goodbye. Mrs. Duvall, I'm terribly sorry. They do not mean what they say. They do not mean my son cannot be dead. I'm, I'm afraid it's true. That was the police. What will I do? What will I do? Wait here, Mrs. Duvall. I'm beginning to get an idea. What the idea was was a little fantastic, but things began to add up. The first place to check my addition was back at Pat Kennedy's apartment. There were no police watching the place, so I slipped in. The same clerk was on duty. I walked up to his desk. Uh-huh. Anything I can do for... Hey, you. Hello, Marvin. What do you want? I thought you was in jail. They let me out. Marvin, how long did Miss Kennedy live here? I... You got no right Come on, to... come on. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want some questions answered. I don't know nothing about it. I think you do. Who came to see Miss Kennedy when she was alive? Listen, I don't want no trouble. You've got it. Answer me. Did anyone come to see Miss Kennedy often? Yeah, but I, I didn't know who he was. Not until... Until the day, huh? That's right. I didn't know. But that don't make no difference. But it makes a lot of difference now. Thanks, Marlon. You've helped me a lot. You ain't gonna get me in no trouble. No, no trouble at all for anyone except me. I want to go into Miss Kennedy's apartment. You can't go in there. I think I can. Come on, Marvin, let me in. You, you said there wasn't going to be no trouble. Marvin, you'll get up off of that chair and let me in Miss Kennedy's apartment or I'll... Okay, okay. But you're making me do it. If the police ask, you're making me do it. That's right. Come on. Come on, then. That's the boy. Straight ahead. Go ahead in, Marvin. I got to get back to the desk. Sure, and call the police? I don't think so, Marvin. You're staying right here. What are you looking for? A typewriter. You see any? She didn't have none. How do you know? I never heard her using one. Mm -hmm. Look around if you see one, yo. I gotta get back to the desk. Just a minute. In a minute. There ain't no typewriter in here. Uh-huh, I didn't think there would be. Well, then what's the idea? A good one. Okay, Marvin, I'm sorry to do this, but I'm going to have to put you out of action for a little while. Until I can get into action. What are you going to do? You ain't going to hit me or nothing like no, that. Oh, no, don't worry. You're just going to be tied up. It'll be uncomfortable. But I'll tell you something, Marvin. What? You won't be half as uncomfortable as I was. And still could be. So, Miss Kennedy didn't have a typewriter. And the letter to Vol had shown me proved that she wrote a letter to me by hand. So, it was a frame to get me for her murder. And I had a pretty good idea who put it around me. But proving it was another matter. 
I took off the coveralls I was still wearing, hopped a cab, and went back to police headquarters. And when I walked in... Hey, it's you. Hello, Cassidy. Where did you come from? Never mind that now. Is Lieutenant Johnson in? No, he ain't. No, I don't wait. Do you mind? What do you want to see him about? The murder of Miss Pat Kennedy and the murder of Philip Duvall. What are you talking about? I'll tell the lieutenant all about it. Uh, maybe you better tell me, Holiday. I'm saving it. Mind if I wait in Johnson's office? How about waiting in my office? Hmm. No, thanks. I like to be alone and do some thinking. What about? Lots of things. But this is getting us nowhere. I'm going into Johnson's office. I told you we ain't in. I know you told me, and I told you I'd wait for him. Okay. Okay, go ahead in and wait. Well, thanks, Cassidy. I'll tell him you're in there. And don't try to get out once you're in. Don't worry, I'll stay put this time. So far, so good. I took a quick look around Johnson's office. It was a typewriter, and I tried it. The type looked the same as the typing on the letter I'd received. The one supposed to have come from Pat Kennedy. Then, as I was looking around... Are you looking for something, Holiday? Oh, come in, Lieutenant. You just love to stick your head in bad places, don't you? Look, Johnson, you would like to know who killed Pat Kennedy, wouldn't you? I know. Maybe you do. And maybe you'd also like to know who killed Philip Duvall, because he knew of what Pat Kennedy was afraid. He was afraid? Of what? Not of what, Johnson? Of whom? What have you got, Holiday? Look, the killer murdered her after he sent me that letter. He killed her just before I was due to show up there. Go on. But the letter was missing from my wallet. If there was a letter? There was, and it was written on this. What are you talking about? You're crazy. I don't think so. From all I found out, Miss Kennedy wasn't too nice. Maybe, maybe she was keeping company with someone who got tired of her. Someone who couldn't afford to let it be known that he knew her. Uh, who is this he you're talking about? The same man who took the letter from my wallet. The same man who watched me go into that apartment building and then called the police and tipped you to the murder. There was only one man alone with you. That's right. Cassidy? Could be. Now, wait a minute. You wait. I'll sit here on your desk and talk. Yeah, go ahead. Now, he waits until I get to the apartment. This man who's afraid the girl will spill the beans about the two of them. Previously, he'd threatened her if she talked. But she was afraid to go to the police. Only because the police couldn't help her. Meaning that the man who threatened her... Was on the force. <laughs> oh, it's funny, huh? Yeah, you're doing a lot of talking, but you haven't said anything yet. All right, I'll start now. That was only the build-up. Wait till I get through. I'm waiting. So Cassidy kills her, frames me, tips the police. Sure. Only he was here when I sent him out to follow up the tip. How could he kill her and get back in that short time? Because the call came from here. Look. All you have to do to get an outside line on one of these phones is to push up this lever. You get a dial tone. You dial police, put in a fake call, and sit back and wait to be sent out on it. Yeah. But there's only one more thing wrong, Holiday. Name it. You got there early. I know I did. I... What? I said you got there early. Yeah. I got there early. Not at 3.30, as the letter asks, but at 3.20. Now, how could you know that unless you read the original letter? Don't move, Halliday. I won't, because I'm not finished. The man who killed Miss Kennedy and Duvall was you. You got Duvall's name and address from the copy of the bail receipt. You had access to it. You knew where to find him. What are you going to do with all this wonderful information? Give it to the police. I'm the police. I'm in charge of this case. Mm-hmm. And if I start to walk out of that door... You'll be killed while escaping. And if I sit right here on your desk... How will you explain a lot of things that will have to come out if I'm brought to trial? Yeah, that's true, too, isn't it? I guess the only thing to do is kill you. And turn around. I have to make this look good. You were running away from me. I shot you. Turn around, Holiday. If you don't, I'll do it for you. Now get up. Okay. I'm up. Turn around. Start walking toward that window. Okay, I'm... I'm walking. That's it. Far enough. Now, Holiday. Uh... Down, Holiday. Yeah, Cassidy. Drop that gun, Lieutenant. Drop you it. stupid fool. Thank you, Cassidy. Thanks very much. Yeah. Say, say you're a pretty smart guy. A pretty smart guy to do what you did. Mr. 
Mr. Holliday, it was a policeman that did the murders? Don't let that throw you, Susie. You see, there's a bad apple in every barrel, no matter what the barrel is. Don't let it change your opinion of the thousands of policemen doing a wonderful job all over the country. Of course. Mr. Holliday, how did it happen that Mr. Cassidy came in just at the right time? Because I was sitting on Johnson's desk. I don't get it. <laughs> well, you see, there was an inter-office communication box on his desk. I kept most of the levers pressed down. I, uh, I sat on them. Somebody had to hear that conversation between me and Johnson... And I figured someone would come in. If they hadn't have... Well, Edgemont is a nice city, but not one I'd like to be buried in. You sat on the levers through the whole conversation. Uh-huh. Gee, that's sure using your head, Mr. Holliday. It's your... Huh? Oh, good night, Susie. Listen in again next week when, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, and this week's original story was written by Russell Hughes. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager, and the part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture.